There are two cylinders here, one inside the other. And in between these cylinders is sticky golden syrup. Well, it's not exactly golden syrup, it's colourless, but it's the same idea. And in here, we have two lines. One line of ink that's blue, and one line of ink that's red. Now, Jessica, you've got a steady pulse? Yes? Well, right, well, would you mind just turning this handle a couple of times, just very slowly, very, very slowly, that's it. That's it. Well, that looks pretty disorganized. In fact, it looks very similar to the cards. We started off with cards in one section of the audience, and they gradually got dispersed, well, actually, very quickly. And they quickly got disorganized, very much like this ink. But now, Jessica, I'm going to ask you to do the impossible. Do you think you can turn this backwards? <laughs> well, let's see if you can. What you've got to do is turn it the opposite direction twice. Once. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Oh, Jessica, that's wonderful. You did it. Thanks very much. So some things can go backwards. But they have to be prepared in a very special way. Or they have to have some outside influence. Like when we were trying to get the cards back into one section of the audience. It needed a little bit of direction. In fact, I had to be down here organizing the direction of the cards. So things naturally go from order to disorder. We use this all the time. When you walk into a room, you expect there to be some air there. You'd be really surprised if you found it all bunched up in one corner of the room. In fact, nobody's ever reported it. Maybe for obvious reasons. But Boltzmann was telling us something much more important than this. He wasn't just telling us about eggs. He was telling us something about the universe. He said, the universe as a whole goes from order to disorder. If you'd have come in a couple of minutes after we started passing around those cards, and I'd said to you, where were those cards two minutes ago? You'd have no idea. You'd have no idea if they came from a section of the audience here or over here. Or in fact, if I'd handed them out in a disorganized way. Now that's exactly the problem facing scientists trying to work out what happened at the beginning of the universe. Because if now we're in a moment of relative disorder, well, what was the ordered state that we came from? What was that original order? In other words, what was the beginning of the universe and what was the beginning of time? What did our order look like? In fact, Boltzmann's statement about disorders, even more powerful, it's telling us something about the end of time. Because when we handed out the cards and they're all disordered, if I'd have let them carry on being passed around, they would have remained disordered. It would have still looked disordered nothing much would have been happening. But if we think back to that definition of time at the beginning of the lecture, time is the period in which events happen. So if the universe, in many, many years' time, is in a state of complete disorder, all the molecules are completely disordered. There are no eggs to break, none of us, no planets, time will have stopped. And that is thought to be one of the possible ends of the universe and the ends of time itself. So this is all pretty depressing stuff. Things get old, 
eggs break, cars rust, plants die. In fact, Boltzmann thought it was very depressing as well. He committed suicide. Here's his tombstone. And there's the equation that explains everything that we've seen today. S is K log W. Order goes to disorder. So is there no good news in any of this? If everything's going to disorder, how come we're here? How come there's life on Earth? Let's think a little bit about those cards. As you were passing them around, from here, I could see certain patterns emerge for just momentarily. It was like a T-shape appeared over here and like an, almost like an L-shape over here and then it disappeared again. It did, they just happened to be together, the cards. That small-scale order appearing on this rocky road down to disorder. In the same way, just shortly after the cards started being passed around, there was still some kind of residual order left over from the beginning. It's that order that gave rise to our solar system. And it's the sun which is the outside influence which provides the energy to keep this order going. Not forever, but temporarily. Now over here, we have a splendid piece of equipment. This is called an orrery. This is 200 years old. And it shows the thought that people had at the time of the clockwork universe. I have to put on these special white gloves to handle it. Now if I turn this handle, you can see the planets move around the central sun in a clockwork way. And it's this clockwork, regular structure of the solar system that gives us a possibility of measuring time. We measure time by events. Remember the definition. We measure time by events. So while we've got the direction of time determined by the flow from order to disorder, the small-scale structure along the way, the order, gives us a measure of time. In fact, it allows us to measure the time. And that's what man's been doing since the beginning of civilization. He's been looking at events and dividing up time into regular periods. Now in the beginning, it was very easy. Caveman had the sun. The sun appeared in the morning and went down in the evening. And you went to get up and you went to go to bed. You also had the seasons. That helped with organizing hunting. But as life got more complex, so the need to measure time more accurately arose. 